Hey everybody, welcome back. Mr. Smith here. In today's slide deck, we're going to keep it short and focused on how do we use LEPS problem solving techniques to deal with questions of force and motion. So in our last slide deck, we brought in a new formula. We called it Newton's second law. And what it said is that if you experience a net force, whether you're in a car or whether you're walking around or running around in the real world, that net force is going to cause you to accelerate. All you do is divide your mass into the net force and boom, you've got the acceleration. What it does is it gives us another layer of complexity in our problem solving. So what I wanted to do is to give you a little bit of a strategic idea before we jump into how do you use LEPS. So here's a little bit of a year in review. We started the year down here at the base of the layer cake of physics, talking about position. So position is where you are, it's measured in meters. And we said early on, if you have a velocity, that velocity is going to make changes to your position. Right. So in a real way, velocity is the boss of position. Later on in the course, we started talking about acceleration. Well, we know acceleration makes changes to your velocity. Now here we are at the top. The top of the food chain is force. And in a really real way, this is the way the world works. If you apply a force with the rear wheels, or if you have a front wheel drive car with the front wheels of your car, if that force is a net force, that's going to cause your car to accelerate. That acceleration is going to make changes to your velocity, and that velocity is going to change where you are. So all of these things link together so that force is the boss of acceleration, acceleration is the boss of velocity, and velocity is the boss of position. What also happens is that physics problems are almost always organized either down the layer cake or up this layer cake. So if you're looking to organize this ton of information that you're going to get when you read these problems that involve force and motion, this is a way to do it. You're going to make a list, and I'll show you that list, but you want to think about, well, if I've got force, I'm probably going to work my way down, and if they start me at position, I'm probably going to be working my way up. That's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. Okay, so having said that, let's go and actually tackle this example where we have the uh, Red Bull F1 car. So what we did was just uh, rewrite it without the picture. We've got 8,000 newtons of force. I pencil that into my list. I've got 746 kilograms. I pencil that into my list. So what you should notice, this is the same list as we've been doing. I've got velocity 1, velocity 2, D, A, T. But now at the top of it, I've got force and mass. So same list, just with a couple of things, but you can see how long this is. So now that I've got everything organized, I've got three formulas that I can choose from. I've got A equals F net over M, and that formula goes along with acceleration equals change in V over change in T, or distance equals average speed times time. So you're going to be able to make choices, but the hint that I just gave you about how the layer cake is organized will really help you. So I've got force and mass. That's a hint that I'm probably going to start with the top of the food chain. So what I'm going to do is check, like I always do, do I need to do any algebra before I use that equation? And it turns out, no, I don't need to do any algebra at all. I can actually just plug in. They don't give me another force, so the force is the net force. So I'm just going to go ahead and say 8,000 newtons over 746 kilograms is going to give me the acceleration of the Red Bull car. So I do that math and I get 10.7 meters per second per second. So that's something that I can pencil into my list now. So 10.7 meters per second per second is the acceleration of the F1 car. It's really quick. Now that I've done that, they want to know how long will it take the car to reach 45 meters per second. That sounds like time to me. So if you notice, what I've done is I've actually written these formulas in the organizational style of the layer cake. I have the force formula first, then I have our acceleration formula, and then I have our position formula. So that was kind of smart that I wrote it that way. So what it does is suggests to me that I'm going to use this formula next. I do have to do a little bit of algebra though, don't I? I'm going to try to solve this for delta t. So cross multiply delta t on both sides divide both sides by A, and what it ends up telling me is that change in time equals change in velocity over A. And if I pencil in, I should be able to find out the answer that I'm after. So delta V, I'm going from 0 to 45 meters per second. So that delta V is 45 minus 0. 
and the acceleration is 10.7 meters per second per second and I can go and figure out the time and that equals 4.2 seconds okay so that's it we did it we solved the problem and they didn't ask us to go all the way through to get the distance and if they did we still could have tackled it right so hopefully after you look at that you'll think well okay that's a little bit of extra work it's a little bit of extra organizing but you've done so much of this already that it should feel pretty decent for you um, and uh, so there you go so let's take a look at another one we've got Usain Bolt here who has a mass of 90 kilograms and so we pencil that in he can accelerate from rest so 0 meters per second is my v1 to 12 meters per second it's my v2 in a distance of 20 meters uh, so what force must he generate well if you notice in this one they gave us distance so they didn't give us force so what I'm thinking is that I'm at the bottom of this layer cake of physics and I'm gonna start somehow with the D equals V average times T formula and I'm gonna see can I get anything from that and oh yeah I can right away because I look at these two velocities V1 and V2 and I know that V average here is 6 meters per second so what I'm going to do is get right to work with this one right here and solve it for the thing I don't know. I'm going to divide both sides by V average and I'm going to rewrite it as T equals D over V average. Pencil in what I know, 20 meters over 6 meters per second. And we're going to figure out that it takes um, Usain Bolt. Uh, 20 over 6 is 3 and let me see. 18 and 2 left over is 3.33 seconds. Okay, so there we go. Next thing we're going to do is keep on moving. Now that I know the time is 3.33 seconds, let's see if we can go one level up. What's the next formula up in our layer cake formula? It's acceleration equals change in speed over change in time. So change in velocity, I look at these two numbers and I recognize the delta V here is 12 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to pencil in my 12 meters per second divided by 3.33 seconds and I can get the acceleration. So let me grab the calc. I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. So 12 divided by 3.33 and I get 3.6 meters per second per second. And then they want the force. Oh, this should be easy for us. Now that we've got acceleration, we'll just keep right on trucking. Force equals m times a. So we just took the a equals f net over m formula and solved it for f equals ma. And so that means 90 kilograms times 3.6 meters per second per second is the answer that we're after. And if we go ahead and do that, we've got it. And that is 324. Newtons. Okay, so that's about as complicated as it gets. It's a lot of information, but if you're organized, you can tackle it. So anyway, bring your questions to class. Great to see you. Um, we'll see you soon in real life and take care. Bye-bye.